So good morning once again, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you are welcome to the unit five of uh, the course. And this is going to focus on um, systems design and acquisition. You would uh, recall that um, previously we had touched on systems development life cycle and that focused on uh, the fact that the systems that we intend to implement usually go through a certain cycle. We identified some five cycle. These cycles included um, uh, uh, planning, uh, analysis, uh, design, uh, implementation, and then the last stage was supposed to be maintenance. Today, we are supposed to be looking at the third stage of the system's uh, development life cycle. And this is the design stage. The design stage would usually focus on the role and uh, features of uh, structuring systems requirements. And uh, that is done through what we call uh, systems um, modeling. The lesson would also touch on um, our relationship with uh, vendors. Vendors, as we uh, re will recall, are people who are ready to give us uh, what we need. So once the system is designed, the next stage of the system is for us to uh, look out for somebody who would be able to have the capacity to provide us with the system and usually that is done by sending your need out there to the market to call for people who can pay it and provide you with the service or the systems we would also take the opportunity to consider the feasibility criteria based on which decision is made either to acquire certain hr information systems or not to acquire. Now let us try to uh, look at some issues here, some statistics that will tend to make us um, understand uh, the whole uh, stage better. Usually, the goal of uh, systems design, you know, life cycle is to provide us with a, a certain structure, structured um, process. Uh, to be followed when you are updating or when you are undertaking any new design as far as uh, information systems are concerned or particularly in our context um, human resource information system uh, it usually also provide you with a certain structured uh, uh, process which will tend to uh, give you the opportunity to improve the system when the need comes. Uh, statistics show that about 30% of information systems projects become successful, 30%. So the question is, where does the 70% go? It will mean that something probably might be accounting for the failure of the 70%. Uh, Again, 50% uh, of that 30% that are, you know, usually successful also go live later than the scheduled, you know, uh, uh, date with usually bloated um, budget. You know why? The answers will follow soon. You remember I touched on the fact that uh, one of the most important reasons why we need to sometimes consider um, a systems scope is to prevent scope creep at the end of the day. Scope creep usually has to do with when the system's uh, boundaries and uh, depth is increased. When that happens, it buys a lot of time and it also comes with new uh, budget. Usually in fiscal development project, you know, uh, arena, we usually refer to that as variations once the system's boundary changes you would expect that contractors will bring a new uh, variation uh, that will end up bloating the budget that we 
earlier on estimated for. Usually, we also say that uh, systems development life cycle, or, uh, and at, particularly at the stage of uh, design, uh, give you know some uh, opportunity for the department, uh, usually the human resource department, to consider the main you know function. And you already know that the main functions of uh, the human resource uh, department has to do with recruiting, selection, uh, training, performance management, uh, compensation. And these are usually very important uh, for, for the design of human resource information system. So at the systems design stage, we will usually consider to a very large extent the core functions of the HR department, which has been highlighted uh, over here. There are two main phases as far as the design consideration stage is concerned. You first need to undertake what we call the logical flow, and then after the logical flow, you consider what we call the physical uh, design. The logical design, sorry, uh, before you consider what we call the physical design. Let's take the logical design first. And usually the logical design, we see focus on the key business processes, which is undertaken by the human resource department. If we talk about the key um, uh, business processes, we are basically talking about the key functions of the department. Now, these key functions are usually translated into observable processes with our technology. Example, how do we undertake recruitment and selection? The process by which we undertake recruitment and selection or acquisition of new employees are broken down into observable processes which are referred to as the core business processes in terms of recruiting and selecting. Now, what has to be noted here is that once you put these processes together, it obviously becomes a certain logical model by which any individual uh, from the uh, information systems department can look at and translate that into somewhat a physical design. Like we usually do when it comes to uh, building drawings, uh, before you even go uh, into building, you probably might have considered a certain you know, drawing that you would want to uh, consider. For instance, how many bedrooms do you want? What is the space needed? All this would have to be translated into a certain outline on a paper based on which the actual builder will look and translate it into a physical, you know, building. If you look at uh, this particular, you know, sample of recruitment uh, processes that has been projected, you would realize that the recruitment processes as a key, you know, business processes within the recruitment and selection function has been translated into this logical flow. For instance, when you would want to uh, acquire new employees, uh, once the need arises, you may want to first start with what we call recruitment requisition. That is by going to the recruitment, I mean the HR department to table in the need for a certain vacancy to be uh, filled. At this point, you may want to also uh, design a selection criteria. From selection criteria, you may want to advertise the job using the selection criteria. Remember, at this point, this is where we do the uh, job specification, description, and requirement. Now, once you go to advertise, you are expecting that you receive many application. Now, after uh, uh, Putting the application together, two things uh, the HR function engages in is to categorize 
the um, applications possibly into two, two uh, being qualified and not qualified or suitable or not suitable. Now, A, if you have a set of application that is suitable, then it becomes your focus to continue with the screening and all that. But if it is not suitable or if it the application set the group of applications are not suitable then you may want to uh, put them aside uh, one of the uh, professional things to do is to send an email to thank them for at least applying and then you continue with the set of applications that are likely to be suitable here you assess them against the criteria and then call for interview. Now, whilst you call for interview, you are likely to screen them down and then shortlist. Once you shortlist, you go ahead and still assess what you have shortlisted uh, against the selection criteria. Uh, what you may possibly want to see is that those who are not uh, uh, qualified at this point may be sent uh, put aside and a new message sent to this set of people to thank them. Now, once you identify a set of applications that are usually, you know, more suitable, you go ahead and call for a new um, uh, uh, interview and assess them. Go ahead again to assess them against the criteria. Those who qualify, you go ahead and then offer the job. So, ideally, you see that something that is usually done in the physical realm as a function of the HR department uh, uh, regarding recruitment and selection is actually broken down into this logical you know processes which will be translated into physical realm as we would have to discuss in the physical design usually the logical design uh, focus on processes, it focuses on policies and procedure. At this point, we have not added technology. It focuses also on what and not how. What is what do you need? What do you do? And what you do is what is translated into that logical design as we have here. Usually, 